Hello! Welcome to Cinderella Through the Ages. My name is Kristen, and I'll be talking a bit about the story of Cinderella and how it's been presented in different retellings. I'll be focusing on a few of the major European versions of the story. Some of these stories are much darker than the Disney version of Cinderella, so it's important to note that this is not a children's program. Many of us are familiar with the story of Cinderella thanks to the 1950 Disney classic, but did you know that the story is much, much older? Many cultures have told the tale of a poor mistreated girl who marries a prince thanks to a bit of magical intervention and the goodness of her character. In each story, the girl meets her future husband at a ball while she is dressed in magically obtained finery and, when he seeks her out later, he doesn't recognize her because she is in rags rather than the rich clothes in which he first sees her. She is identified through a variety of means, one of the most popular being her shoe. But why a shoe? One of the earliest known written versions of the story originated in 9th century China. In the Chinese language, the word for shoe is a homonym for the word for harmony, and shoes are used in wedding ceremonies for this reason. Like the ancient Chinese version, the beloved Disney version uses a shoe to identify Cinderella, but this version of the story actually originated in France in 1697. It was translated into English in 1729. In this story, written by Charles Perrault, Cinderella gets to go to the ball in a magical pumpkin carriage thanks to the help of her fairy godmother. Other familiar elements of the story include the mice who are turned into horses, although unfortunately these mice do not talk and are not continuously stalked by a mischievous cat. And of course, one of the most famous elements, the glass slipper. Cinderella is so kind in this version of the story, she allows her cruel stepsisters to live in the castle with her, and even arranges marriages for them. The Grimm's version of Cinderella sees a far more gruesome fate befall the wicked stepsisters. In this story, Cinderella is helped not by a fairy godmother, but by a bird, or multiple birds. Like in the Perel version, Cinderella gets to attend the ball, and the prince falls in love with her. This time, the slipper Cinderella leaves behind is gold, rather than glass both of which sound like horribly uncomfortable footwear. When the prince searches for Cinderella by getting women to try on her glass slipper, the stepsisters go through horrible lengths to convince the prince they are indeed the one he danced with all night at the ball. The first sister cuts off her toe to fit in the shoe, but as she and the prince ride into the sunset, she is betrayed by a tattletale bird who cries, Rup de goo, rup de goo, there's blood in the shoe. The shoe is too tight. This bride is not right. The prince then returns to the house and is convinced by the next sister, who in this case cut off a bit of her heel to fit in the shoe, is the one, but again the romantic ride is spoiled by a poetic bird singing about shoes filled with blood. Once again, the prince returns and is finally able to reunite with Cinderella. Personally, I would question the prince a bit if I danced with him for hours on end, two days in a row, and he mistakes me for not one, but two of my horrible stepsisters who look and act absolutely nothing like me, but hey, who am I to question true love? Most of these stories are quite short, which doesn't really give Cinderella time to question anything. Aside from learning that Cinderella lost her mother, is mistreated by her stepsisters, and remains pure of heart despite all this mistreatment, we really know very little about Cinderella, and know even less about the prince. As Cinderella and her loving prince ride off, the birds sing a new song. Rook de goo, rook de goo, no blood's in the shoe. The shoe's not too tight. This bride is right. The birds return for a last hurrah at the wedding, where they proceed to peck out both the stepsisters' eyes. So, remember a few minutes ago when I said that Cinderella was always pure at heart? It turns out that isn't really true. In G.M. Batista Bastille's early 17th century version of the tale, The Cinderella Cat, one of the first versions of the story to ever appear in Europe, Cinderella actually kills her stepmother in order to acquire a new, more favorable one. Another unusual aspect of the story is the fact that we find out Cinderella's real name, Zazola. Zazola is the daughter of a prince and, after being mistreated by her stepmother, ends up conspiring with her governess and decides to kill her stepmother and convince her father to marry the governess. All goes well for about six days after the governess marries her father, but things go downhill for Zazola when her new stepmom brings her six actual daughters to the castle. It's at this point that Zazola starts to be known as Cat Cinderella and is mistreated and forced to do all the chores. 
Cinderella's magical intervention in the story comes from a bird in a magical fig tree. After using her magical powers to attend a ball and dance with the king three days in a row, the king asks his servant to catch Cinderella and find out who she is. After the third day of the ball, the servant is finally able to get Cinderella's patten, which is a type of protective overshoe that was made to protect the feet from mud or wetness. The servant then brings the patten back to the king. Now, take a look at a patten. While I quote what I'm guessing is the most romantic soliloquy ever written about overshoes. If the foundations are so lovely, what must the house be like? Oh, lovely candlestick, which held the candle that consumes me. Oh, tripod of the lovely cauldron in which my life is boiling. Oh, beautiful corks, attached to the fishing line of love, with which he caught this soul. There, I'll embrace and squeeze you. If I cannot reach the plant, I will adore the roots. And if I cannot have the capitals, I will kiss its base. You were once the memorial stone for a white foot, and now you're a snare for this black heart. You made the lady who tyrannizes this life a hand and a half taller, and you make this life grow just as much in sweetness as I contemplate and possess you. There now, wasn't that lovely? The king holds a banquet in order to find Cinderella, but she does not attend. And then he orders everyone to fast with him the following day and to not leave behind a single woman, whoever they may be. Cinderella joins everyone the following day, and the king knew as soon as he saw her that she was the one he wanted, but he waited until she tried on the patent to declare his intentions. The king then made Cinderella a queen, and the stepsisters were left quite bitter, but at least they didn't have their eyes pecked out by birds. So there you have it. Several tales of Cinderella, all with a footwear related happily ever after for the girl who is poorly treated by her stepmother. I hope you learned a bit more about the story.